Oh, good. Good. Yes, it's an oasis in the storm of life. In the 19th century and 20th century, especially, Switzerland was very well known for having a widespread problem with goiters affecting over 80% of the population. And especially in all the particular alpine areas of Switzerland, which is the most of Switzerland. So it's associated with ailments like cretinism and deaf mute births. But the most prominent physical symptom was the so-called goiter, a greatly enlarged thyroid gland bulging forward from the neck. Other physical symptoms included dwarfism, uh, loss of hair, yeah. thick skin, enlarged tongue, muscle impairment, enough to prevent walking or even standing. So I, I have problems with the term cretinism. I, I, do you remember as a child, you know, with people insulting other people? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never knew its origins. And I still think it's a whole word. So I'm actually going to use the French version of it, crétin, to, 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 to distance myself from the, the English version of it. So it is derived from the French crétin, idiot or a person who is mentally subnormal or physically deformed. It's in, interesting that um, this is thought to have come from an uh, Alpine dialectical form of chrétien, meaning Christian, anyone in Christendom. Maybe it was being used originally in the for, form of, oh, poor fellow, a good Christian, you know, poor Christian sort of thing. But anyway, that's the, the origins or possible origins of the term crétin. So sufferers often had a visibly enlarged thyroid gland and in the worst cases were severely retarded. And the epidemic continued until the 1920s or even later in some places. Now, this this is um, a cartoon by Hergé. Do you remember... Hergé's Adventures of Tintin. Um, yes. <laughs> and this is, in fact, one of his characters called Captain... Does anybody know who it is? Captain, Captain Haddock. Captain Haddock. Well done. I'd have never, never got that. Captain Haddock. Bashi Bazook, Iconoclast, Mou la Gaufre, Crétin des Alpes. The original story was The Seven Crystal Balls in 1943. And by then, maybe this this expression was sufficiently obscure to be inoffensive. It basically means you're an alpine cretin, you know, a, a cretin des Alpes. Do, does anybody know what the others mean? What a moolah gopher translates as, and I've, I've looked waffles, it up, is a, a, waff, a waffle iron. Yeah. Ah, waffle iron. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know why that's an insult, but there you go. Um, but then there's bashi bazook, which means crazy yeah. head. And that was taken from the Turk from the Turkish army, who were, were seen as particularly wild. So you're a bashi bazook. This is obviously Virginia Woolf. I think that's a lovely. It was one of the last photographs I've, uh, taken of her in the Bloomsbury House, which a few a few weeks later was ended up uh, bombed out in London. And it's one one of the only um, color photograph. It was taken in in a form of color at that time as well. And just before this photograph was taken, uh, about a similar time, was published in 41, maybe a bit earlier, I don't know, but it was, it was a, a short story called A Symbol. And in this she says, it, she's basically a woman who's staying in a village in Sw the Swiss Alps, overlooking a huge mountain. It's that contemplation about the mountain that forms the basis of the, of the short story. But she says within that, and she's looking at, from a balcony out at the mountain, Am I being selfish? Ought I not to be so ashamed of myself when there is so much suffering? It is not confined mm. to the visitors. The natives suffer dreadfully from goiter. Of course it could be stopped if anyone had enterprise and money. Ought one not to be ashamed of dwelling upon what, after all, can't be cured? So she was going through um, severe mental problems. She's al already had two attempted suicide and then... Um, she drowned herself by filling her pockets with stones and walking into the River Ouse on March the 28th, 1941, age 59. Oh, dear me. I mean, all the pictures of her, she has got like, for me, she's got a kind of haunted look about her, hasn't yeah. she? Yeah. And this is one of a, a, of a Swiss crétin, Joseph Le Crétin. Um, I'm not sure when it would have been, probably late 19th century, early 20th century. 
a, a incredibly clear photograph, isn't it? Very clear photograph and somehow, I don't know, slightly haunting really, I find. Mm. What happens in terms of the uh, cretinism was that the if if a woman in the first trimester of pregnancy had a severe iodine deficiency, caused the embryo to miss crucial stages of development and the child would be born a cretin. So various causes were put forward for this, including landscape, atmospheric factors, so high up, genetics, and moral failure. Within this, there are three, three sort of heroes, or two of whom were local, the equivalent of local GPs, and the other was slightly higher in the medical establishment. But um, Dr. Heinrich Hunziker proposed his theory of attributing go goiter to iodine deficiency. And then in 1914, he spoke at a local doctor society. He said everyone was looking in the wrong place. The cause of the conditions was not a germ or genetic defect, defect, but something missing. Not an agent, but an absence, an absence of iodine. So it was published as a little booklet. It was brief and simple, but the criticism was fierce. A leading doctor at the University of Zurich, Adolf Oswald, um, wrote a scathing rebuttal in the country's most authoritative medical journal, demanding that the pro proposal must be vigorously opposed. That's a normal thyroid on the left and a goitered one. Beneath the skin, too thin to be felt is your thyroid if you feel your neck down at the bottom. It's, it's a gland shaped like a butterfly with wings spread on either side of your throat. It produces two hormones that act, that act on almost every cell in your body. And from it affects metabolism to brain function, body temperature to growth. And all and these contain the element iodine. You, your body yeah. can create iodine. So to produce the hormones, you must draw iodine from the world around you, mainly from food, but also drink and the air you breathe. You only need a tiny amount of it, but without it, the consequences are dramatic. This is hero number two, Dr. Otto Bayard who conducted experiments in, in a local village, proving the effectiveness of this theory of Hunsinger's before about iodized and iodized salt being something that could reduce goiters. So um, he prepared table salt at, uh, at, to, and to give to five families in a goiter area for five months. He worked alone mixing close to 100 kilograms of salt with his snow shovel turning it over until he's sure that the potassium iodide was evenly spread. Then loading up on a mule, he set out for Grashen, which was a very remote village. The experiment ran through the, through the winter. And when he returned in spring, not only had the five families not been poisoned, but also had slimmer necks. The lowest dose he'd given to the family of Theophil Brigger, a farmer who'd raised seven children aged six to 15 on his own. His children were all transformed and their goiters almost gone. So he, he continued the experiments in Grashen until at the end of 21, he re received an inv invitation to present his results at the new Swiss Goiter Commission in Bern. So it recommended um, that the, the, the idea of having iodized salt to the national diet, the cantons, and it was the first nationwide trying out of something like this, of ad, uh, making an additive. And it's been, proved to have been the most cost-effective preventative health measure ever applied in Switzerland, or you could say anywhere. By 1930, it was available nationwide, and there was a remarkable decline in goiter cases. Deaf mute births were reduced very significantly. Now, this, this guy's interesting, <laughs> called Eugene Bircher who lived till 1956. He was opposed to the introduction of iodized salt and remained opposed until the end of his life. Even though the fact that um, within a year of the national event, existing goiters had shrunk 66% in school children and the average surface area of the thyroid shrank to an invisible and normal level after four years of prophylaxis of it being taken. He remained opposed to it until the end of his life. His home canton, canton of Argau still largely suffered from iodine deficiency in goiter because he was in charge of health in that <laughs> in that area until I think until he nearly until his death. 
he also had a very close relationship um, with Nazi Germany. He was um, he was alleged that he funded Adolf Hitler in his early years. Not a very pleasant character. So it was, it was the, the world's first food fortification program. First attempt to improve the lives of an entire population by adding a chemical to its food supply. You could imagine the um, the out, outcry there would be if that been that would have been attempted nowadays. You know, and the and the anti vaxxers and so on. Yeah. But it, now this I didn't know, and I meant to check on this, but it says that iodized salt is used by more than eighty eight percent of the world's population. Does that mean that all our salt that we get normally is iodized? But anyway, it's certainly been one of the most successful public health measures ever devised. Now, this is a, a 33-year-old uh, woman with a goiter from um, Bern. Uh, at that time, this is the, the sort of comments are making made by other writers. Victor Hugo wrote from Bern in, in 1839, Les Alpes font beaucoup d'idiots. The Alp is full of idiots. Mark Twain in 1880 reported the words of an English traveller. I have seen the principal features of Swiss scenery, Mont Blanc and the Goiter. Now for home. But it, interestingly, and this is something I knew nothing about, was the Derby Neck. Anybody heard of that? There was a report on this in um, 1933, quite late on, by a P. Turton in an academic journal, which had done a very study thorough study of um, goiters in Derbyshire, different parts of Derbyshire, the high parts of Derbyshire. Val, yeah? No, it's just I know a woman who, who was born in Derby who has a goiter and it's called Derby Neck. Well, like the bottom um, photograph of the young woman, yeah, young yeah, girl. Yeah. yeah. This is a quote from the study. In the neighbouring town of Bakewell, was also many goiterous people for years, but the introduction of clean water was followed by great diminution in the incidence of disease. There is no native case of goiter in Bakewell at the present time. So they, they said this was a mixture of getting the food supply right, the water supply right, um, collecting the, correcting the deficiency of iodine, and it eventually went away. Incidence of goiter in girls aged eight to 18 years in Derbyshire schools based on an examination of over 20,000 children. And you can see that uh, by the age of 13 years age, 10% had a goiter. This is amazing because I didn't know what you were discussing. I had no idea. <laughs> and if I get sunburnt in the summer, I have a white line from there to there. And it's where they cut my throat to tell me I had a goiter. And that's many, many years ago. You you will see it in the summer. It's, it's like I had my throat cut. And I don't know. They said I had a goiter. Doreen, a much prettier name is a necklace scar. Pardon? You can be identified by a necklace scar to kind of soften it a bit. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, I often do. I often put things around here. You you can't see it. You can only see it when my other skin changes colour oh, yeah. through the sun. Yeah, but it, I, I remember when, when I was uh, in first doing nursing, we used to do thyroidectomies on the ward at Ancoats. Used to look yeah. after them post-op. A friend of mine had, had one done. <laughs> Hers was a slight goiter, but she'd been on thyroxine for years as well. And yeah. again, she ended up with a necklace scar. Yeah. They're, they're and she must have been nearly 50 when she had it done. Yeah. I suppose now she must be in her 60s. Anyway, mm -hmm. let, let me just finish off this, <laughs> this sorry, sorry, this rather optimistic tale, actually, isn't it? This was the third guy, Dr. Hans Eggenberger. He, um, he was at that commission. He was enthused by it. It was a real activist doctor. And he he was the uh, like the in charge of a small town health. He, he returned from the commission, announced uh, an addition to the programme of light entertainment at the town cinema, a lecture on iodized salt. 
Perhaps it was a curiosity or the colour slides or the reputation of the charismatic 40-year-old doctor, but the cinema was packed. He, um, Goiter was embarrassing, ugly, and a subject for humour, so Eggenberger began his presentation with the image of the Madonna, the Dresden altarpiece by Albeck Jura. And he said, unimpeachable, unmockable, and exhibiting, he claimed, an obvious goiter on the, uh, the Virgin Mary. So, speaking in the local Swiss-German dialect, he filled his talk with jokes and tugs on the emotions. He called iodized salt whole salt uh, in an echo of whole milk and whole meal uh, to make it sound natural and healthy. Two days later, just one month after the Goiter Commission met, Whole, whole salt went on sale in that canton. Within a few weeks, an entire canton had iodized salt, not by diktat, but by popular demand. So one of the things about this story is why is it not more familiar? That you've got those three uh, three people, Hunziker, Bayard and Essenberg, they remain unknown. The One of the reasons uh, Eugene Birchick raged against the downright careless, not to say criminal praise of iodine, he launched Trumaval, an expensive eight-day goiter treatment that he'd concocted, which he was trying to sell at the same time. So why is it not more familiar? Well, if you look at the other, other famous Swiss people of the same time, Hermann Rorschach of the Rorschach test, uh, at the inkblock test, was a colleague of Eggenberger's in Herisau. Albert Einstein went to the same school as Eugen Bircher. Max Bircher Benner, of the famous um, Mersley fame, um, lives on um, through his Mersley. Carl Jung do documented the strange depression that struck his mother when the family moved to Laufen, a village that, as uh, the survey shows, was badly affected by goiter. But they've gradually been forgotten. Now, why is that the case? Maybe it's part about people's willingness, government's willingness, country's willingness to forget about shameful history. I mean, there's a whole list you could put for here. The, ne the, the quick, the denazification in Germany after World War II that soon disappeared and stopped. The ma massacre of Tutsis by the uh, Hutu in Rwanda, cutting hundreds of thousands of deaths in 1994. Uh, the Armenian genocide in Turkey during World War I. Comfort women in Japan, World War II. British abuses in Kenya during the Mao Mao uprising. Slavery and racism in the United States. They're all there, aren't they? They're all there. The Cambod Cambodian genocide in four years resulted in the deaths of 1.5 to 2 million people, a quarter of Cambodia's population. So heroes like that, I think that from the um, the Swiss, Swiss goiter affair need remembering, and this is, a, I suppose, a small remembrance of them. So the, there's a, a book out recently that... Yes. Anyone who's concerned with this guy should read it. They're, they're not just dissing everything that's coming out. It's the conspiracy theories of what governments are doing. Um, and uh, a lot of the anti-vax stuff in this country and across the world. I, I feel particularly strongly about that because I had, if I'd have had a polio vaccine, I wouldn't have had polio, you know, which has affected the whole of my life. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, good to see everybody. Hello, Derek. You've, you've arrived too. Yes, Hi. <laughs> oh, no, you're I'm a different. clipboard lady. <laughs> I like clipboards. I yeah. have a clipboard. I like clipboards yeah. too. <laughs> clipboard. <laughs> I have four clipboards. <laughs> the What's happening? What's going on here? Everybody's <laughs> got one. <laughs> Uh, you don't need batteries or electricity, you just need paper and pencil and, uh, and off you go.